This is one of Europe's strangest theme parks. Park St. Paul is located about an hour, 20 minute drive north of central Paris, right outside of Beauvais. And it's only about a 15 minute drive from the Beauvais airport. The park opened in 1983 and is home to six operating roller coasters. And even though there's six of them, the actual park is not very big, only about 37 acres. They're located right off of a major road nestled in the trees. It's actually really cool when you view this park from above, you can see this waterway that forms a big spiral in the center. It's really quite cool. They have a boat ride that goes out in the water and then all of the main attractions are like on the outer edges. But most of the rides that you'll see will feel temporary. Like they're part of a carnival, like not a whole lot here feels permanent. You can just tell that they don't have the budget of a lot of the other major parks in France. And so as a result, they opt for cheaper alternatives when it comes to attractions. The plus side of that is that this is a relatively affordable park to visit. If you buy a ticket at the gate, it's like 26 euros, which really isn't bad at all. I wouldn't call this a full day commitment. I know when we visited, we did like a half day there and we definitely felt accomplished. We were able to do everything that we really wanted. That being said, if you're younger, there might be a bit more for you to do here. Park St. Paul is by no means a thrill park. Their primary audiences are families with younger kids. None of the rides here are too crazy. Their highest roller coaster is only like 50 feet off the ground or 15 meters. And we definitely felt like we were probably not the target demographic when we rolled up and we saw like busloads of school children pouring out and here we all are in our 20s like whoa the average guest here is like half our age. I think we definitely stood out a little, that's for sure. And I'm trying to imagine what I would have thought of Park St. Paul if I visited when I was like 10 or 11 or 12. Because the general atmosphere is just so bizarre. Park St. Paul has decked the whole place out with a bunch of oddball, random mishmash characters that are out on the midways, incorporated into the rides. Everywhere you look, there is something weird to see. So it definitely kept things interesting, to say the least. It felt like a bad dream. Like I was in a weird cartoon where everything's being thrown at you and there's no rhyme or reason for it. It's just there. By far the closest property that I would compare Park St. Paul to is Bon Bon Land. They're in a very similar situation with lots of just weird, quirky statues, odd characters, but the place had some sort of charm to it in a weird way. There was a lot more personality. What Bon Bon Land did that was weird, Park St. Paul tries to do and it just kind of comes off as creepy. Though the theming was a little out there at times, I do give them credit for being pretty creative. You know, this is clearly a park that doesn't have access to any intellectual property, so they just made their own characters. The Park St. Paul mascot is this little bluebird. You can see him out front and also sitting on like benches so you can get a photo with him. There are lots of different ties to farming, several attractions themed to prehistoric creatures such as dinosaurs. They actually have one of the best themed Zamperla discos I've ever been on. I love the rock work with the waterfalls on the side, very visually impressive. I wish that continued throughout because while some attractions have decent theming, the park as a whole just feels like a slab of concrete with just stuff thrown about. And I think I could excuse it if things at least look nice, but I'll be honest, Park St. Paul is kind of ugly. One of the biggest things I think could improve that is just a fresh coat of paint. It looks like the park is not receiving the proper maintenance and upkeep that it should. And I think I'd be willing to look past that if they had attractions that were really like outstanding. But Park St. Paul is not full of a ton of substance. Their standout roller coaster is a Gravity Group wind coaster, one of their family models. That one was a lot of fun, full of some good airtime hills. Each one of them hits, especially in the back, he gets some great floater air. I also quite enjoyed its entrance with those big giant logs. To no surprise, that is their newest coaster. It's why it's the best. Prior to that, their next biggest attraction was a PAX Wild Train. This is definitely one of those portable looking rides I was talking about. It's set up with those temporary entrance ramps and stations that looks like they're about to pack it up next week to send to the next location. The track setup is very odd. Switching back and forth between whether it has a backbone or not makes for an interesting look. When you actually ride it, in the front, it definitely feels pretty janky. In the back, it can be kind of aggressive, especially down that first drop you kind of yank over. It was honestly better than we were expecting. It was our first coaster by PAX, and actually right next to it is a drop tower by the same company. That was a new one. Gradually rises up at a very slow but sure pace, giving you a view of a bunch of trees, and then you have a pretty sudden drop and breaks sharply at the bottom. Definitely an abrupt stop, an interesting experience overall. But back to the roller coasters, there's a Vacoma Junior coaster right up front called Aero Train. Minnie Mouse cartoon is somehow not themed to the character of Minnie Mouse. It's a Zamperla with a really terrifying train front. 
There's a pretty elaborate wacky worm that goes through an apple. This spinning wild mouse didn't really spin at all. You walk through a block of cheese to get there and there's this really creepy guy standing out front. That's another attraction that looks like it's about to get packed up on a truck to head to the next location. Many of these rides have a sign out front that details a bit of its history and gives some fun facts about the ride including height, speed, manufacture, which is actually a great touch and I wish more parks did stuff like that. One of the weirder rides we found, which is not unique to Park St. Paul, but still cracks us up, is this tiny, tiny log flume that has no station, no ride operator, no perimeter fence. You just walk up to it and plop your kid in it, and then they just float along. Something that you would never see in America. And it's funny quirks like that that kept Park St. Paul interesting. Lots of play structures for the kids, including these zoo animals and this massive human skull, which is honestly kind of dark and definitely questionable. There's a slide that you go down on a knapsack, that's a good time. In the back right corner is a spooky building that houses a hall of mirrors. And then next door is a haunted walkthrough. That was the only attraction that we didn't have time for that we would have liked to have done, but somehow had the longest line of the whole park. A lot of kids waiting to do this one. And then the elephant in the room here. This coaster is called Formula One, it is standing but not operating. It's a Wild Mouse-esque coaster with some outer banks looked really janky and from what we understand it was. This ride might single-handedly be the reason this park doesn't get the love and care it should. Because after three different accidents on this thing, it's likely caused potential guests to stay away. It all started in 2005 when the ride had a collision. Then in 2009, there was an accident that resulted in the death of a woman who was not riding properly and she was thrown from the coaster. Then finally in 2020, another woman died after the park removed the seat belts that were installed after the 2009 accident. So it seems like this ride is done for good. And the sad thing is that is not the only attraction here that has been prone to accidents. Also, in 2005, a car on their looping coaster broke away and hit a pole, resulting in several injuries. Unlike Formula One, this coaster was removed after the accident. Now, obviously, that's not a great track record for this park. How did I personally feel while here? Well, there wasn't any moment where I felt unsafe. That didn't change my opinion that the park atmosphere just wasn't great. I can't say it was a park I was particularly fond of. It's definitely one of those locations that I probably won't be going back to unless they did something crazy at an attraction that's like a must do. But at least to me, it seems like they aren't even doing the proper upkeep on the attractions that they do have. So I can't really picture them adding anything major. And I'd much rather them fix up the current park before putting in a bunch of new rides. And it's just sad because France is known for having some truly beautiful theme parks. And then there's just this. I don't regret going, but do I recommend it? Well, not necessarily. I think it's one thing if you're a local with kids looking for something affordable to do for a half day, but if you're visiting from out of town, there's a lot of other parks in France that I'd be more likely to recommend, and not just the expensive ones like Disney. Even up the street, another small park, Parc de Bacassi, much nicer. So let me know down in the comments below if you've had the opportunity to visit Parc St. Paul in France, if you had a similar experience to the one that I had, if you agree with my points, and of course stay tuned for more park reviews here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.